shall move things and I shall turn things around and I shall turn tables upside down. Watch me move. I shall surely turn things right side up. Watch me move. Watch me move in the next weeks. In the coming weeks. Watch and see me move upon the earth. Watch and see me move upon the church. Watch and see me move in your life. Watch and see for there shall be a move and there shall be a move. And it shall be where you least expect it says the spirit of God my God no don't look for it because you will not look in the right place my God it shall be where you least expect it and you will say God are you moving here and you will say God I understand I see you moving there and the Lord says no it's not here neither is it there watch and see me move where you least expect it says the son of the living God says the spirit of God for surely I shall move in your life I shall move and it shall astound the people around you and it shall astound the nations and it shall astound the people my God it shall astound the leaders watch and see me move says the spirit of God and I shall do it suddenly and the move shall be suddenly says the spirit of God watch and see me move suddenly for as suddenly as I moved in the beginning of the year such suddenly I shall move at the end of the year watch and see me move it shall be a sudden move says the spirit of God in your life in your nation and in the nations around the earth my God leaders shall rise and not understand what's going on watch and see me move for I shall turn tables I shall raise skirts I shall expose I shall uproot, I shall destroy, and I shall replant. I shall blind, and I shall open eyes. Watch and see me move, says the Spirit of God. Surely I shall move upon the earth. Surely I shall move in your life. Surely I shall move in your nation. But it will not be as you think. It shall not be as many uh, would prophesy. Mm, mm. For surely they see in the natural. Surely they see out of presumption. They don't understand my ways. For my ways are above your ways. No, no, my ways are not like you. No, I am not. I am not man. I am not man. I am man. I am God. I am sovereign. I shall not move as you move. I shall not think as you think. My God, you shall do things away uh, that is carnal of, the, of this world. And surely I am God and I shall be sovereign in my actions. I shall destroy and I shall raise up. Even before the foundations of the earth, watch and see me do something suddenly. I did I did it suddenly at the beginning of the year. Watch and see me do something something suddenly in December. It shall be a, a sudden December. It shall be a sudden December. It shall be a sudden December. I shall shake the earth. I shall shake the earth. Watch and see me shake your life. Watch and see me shake nations. Watch and see me shake cities. Watch close, watch close, watch close as the Spirit of God. Look and see, look and see, look and see what I shall do. For I shall reveal my secrets only unto the servants, the prophets. I shall reveal it to them. I shall, I shall reveal to them ahead of time. Watch and see. 
get in alignment get in alignment get in alignment get in alignment arise align adapt and adjust in alignment to what I am going to do step out of the kernel and step into my highway for surely even though it's hot even though the sun of righteousness shines upon the pitch and it's hot watch and see me turn things around in the nations of the earth I shall do it for some I shall do it for some and it will be the nations you will not think it shall, it shall be the people you will not think people whom you have discarded nations whom you have discarded members uh, members of your of your home whom you have discarded members of your of your life whom you have family members whom you have abandoned and say that they watch and see me shake watch and see me move in their lives as the spirit of the living God for I shall move not as you think but watch and see me move December the end of the year I shall surely move says the spirit of the living God come on we give him praise come on we give him praise come on we give him praise come on we give him glory come on we give you glory come on we come on we can do better than that come on we give you glory we give you praise God we honor you God we delight in you God we thank you for your prophetic word Lord Lord, Lord, let us get understanding today. In all our getting, let it be understanding that we get today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, God. Father, this word today, Lord. Lord, let it be straight from the throne room of God. Let everything that be said, God, would be straight from the throne. Lord, let us, Lord, let me not err in anything, God. Let flesh not be spoken through me, God. Purify this vessel today. Purify this vessel today, O God. That the prophetic unction will be pure today, Father God. Father, in the name of Jesus, and let it bring let it bring forth a blessing to the people around the earth, God. Lord, let it be a blessing to the people of the earth, God. And Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you. God for those who don't miss appointments in the house of the Lord who don't miss appointments in the house of the Lord I thank God for those who are here physically because they can be once you can be you should be come on once you can be you should be where God wants you am I correct once he makes a way, come on, once he makes the way, you are supposed to be. Are you not hearing me? If he makes the way for you to be in a particular place, it means he wants you there. Come on. If we are not there, it means you've missed your appointment with him. And sometimes we don't get that. And we think we can, we can give God second best. Well, Lord, I still watched it. No, 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 it doesn't work that way with the Lord doesn't work that way with the Lord there are many who are on uh, uh, around the world really be honest with you the live is for the people around the world because many watch around the world and map and so we praise God for those of you around the world and uh, uh, many in the United States many across on on the other side and in my friends and in, in Dubai and Cameroon uh, England and, and so forth uh, thank God for you for, for watching. But the family who's supposed to be here, you're supposed to be here. You're not supposed to be anywhere else but here. I know I'm sorry, but it doesn't work where I can watch it live. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm being very real here. Okay? So once you're supposed to be here, you're supposed to be here. Full stop. There's a message that the Lord has for us. There's a message that the Lord has for us. And last week, the Lord said to us, don't give up. How many of you remember that? But he didn't say don't give up on circumstances. He didn't say don't give up on your finances. He didn't say don't give up on your health. He literally was telling us don't give up on him. That was the bottom line of the message. 
Because how many of you know finances can fail? How many of you know health can fail? How many of you know people can fail? Yeah, come on. For real. But He will never fail us. And so He said to us, don't give up on Him. In this, situ in this circumstance that we're in, this situation that we're in globally, we are not to give up on Him. And so we thank God for that word last week. He gave us things to pray about. Uh, you know, five areas that we are to do warfare. Those of you who don't have it, please go on YouTube, on, on, on Charmaine Noel on YouTube, and, and you get it. Don't give up. Make sure you have it, please, so you know exactly what the Lord is saying. And those of you who are here, please don't forget to pray that type of prayer. We are not praying amiss anymore. Come on. We're not praying, Lord, I don't know what to pray about. Lord, help me. We know exactly what we are to pray about. Amen? Amen. Now, so today, you know, I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to begin by, by asking you a question. Are we, are we guilty of saying what others want to hear? And we do it for peace's sake. Or, or we do it for our own personal gain, you know? You know, sometimes we, we just say something just because to make peace in the home. Or, or sometimes we may say something for our own personal benefit. You know, we throw something out there, you know, <laughs> to, you know, like, boy, I really like chocolate. And so, you know, so we just throw it out there, you know, um, and see who catches, that, catches on to that, you know, that somebody will bring a chocolate. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not hinting anything at all. Don't think I am. You know, and, and, and so sometimes we, we, you know, we tend to do that. But, but I'll tell you something with Jesus. He never did that. You know, Jesus always hit straight. You know, when he, when he spoke, you know, when he disagreed on a matter, he told you straight. This is not the way it's supposed to be. This is the way, this is the way it is. And, and many times he had clashes with the Pharisees and the scribes. You know, and, uh, and he, he was very, very strict, especially on the Pharisees, because they were the ones in particular who, whose doctrine was the closest to his. Out of all the, all the different groups around his time. And, and so he would be hardest on them. And this is why sometimes if you find me being really hard and you praise God for it. It means I love you that much and I really know that you are that close to really being in that place where God wants you to be. Come on, come on. If you find that I'm not even taking you on, you need to worry. You need to pray some more. Lord, let prophet be get, strong, get, get you know, firmer with me. Let prophet just come and hit me hard. Let me take it on the left and let me take it here, right here, right here, prophet. You know, because, because with the Lord, come on, he chastens those whom he loves. And so sometimes we think, well, God hated the Pharisees. Well, no, it's quite the opposite. He really wanted the Pharisees to get themselves in alignment. And there was one particular area that he really did not like, and that was in, uh, concerning oral tradition. What they were doing is that they were substituting the very Torah, the very, the very word of God, the first five books, right? They were, they were substituting that for a tradition, Oral tradition, first it was something they would say orally and then they began to write down what they were just speaking. Oh, let's do this, let's do that, let's write it down. That song's really good. And so they were interpreting the word of God in a way that, God, that the Lord did not want them to. And they chose to put it in their own mind. Let's go this way. This is what the Lord really wants. And in one particular area that, that Jesus was really strict on was the transmission of contamination transmission of contamination and so he was dealing with that and I'll say this to us as Christians because many of us as Christians we don't understand the Torah we think the Torah is just made of laws and you know we just need to get rid of those laws and much of the Torah has nothing to do with laws as a matter of fact the Torah is made up of stories Come on, it's a story about, about uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's a story, uh, come on, about Moses. Are you understanding? It's stories, and within the stories, there were laws. Are you hearing me? 
and we are not to pull out the codified part as, as the new covenanters and just pull out and, and so and so we are not supposed to have anything to do with the, the, the Torah. No, quite the opposite. We are to look at the stories and the stories is a, it's really the life of God having a relationship, a beautiful love, a relationship with a people and then eventually having a covenant relationship with this people. And so we are reading it as stories and we pull from the stories and, and, and that's the old. But even when we come to the new covenant, what did Jesus do? It's the same thing. It was rules, same rules. They were rules, but the rules, he, he showed the rules in stories, in parables. Are you not hearing me? And so Christ did it where he, he did it in a way where we can't miss it. He spoke about it in stories. How many of you as little children? You like stories. How do we relate to little children? We speak to them in stories. How many of you know we are little children? We like to, we like to feel we're big, no? Oh, I am saved 30 years. I am saved 40 years. That's older than how you really are, but you're saved 40 years. Right? Some, I heard somebody say that. I heard somebody say that they're in ministry 40 years when I think their age was, their age was 40 something but they're in ministry 40 years. I'm, I'm like, okay, if I work out the maths, you know? And so, and so, uh, you know, uh, so we find ourselves in a place where the Lord is telling us, listen, in the new covenant, it's, it's no different as it pertains to stories. I want you to understand me. I want you to understand my way. And the way you will understand is listen to my story. And you will understand what it is to be a new covenant or what it is to know my love and understand my love. And he even and within the stories of the old and the stories of the new, what did he teach? He spoke about the hypocrites. What it is to not know him, what it is to not follow him. He spoke about the hypocrites. And in this story that we're going to read today, we're going to realize that the Lord Jesus was dealing with hypocrites. He was dealing with hypocrites, and so the title of the message is Colossal Contaminants. Colossal Contaminants. Yesterday I was, I was reading as I, I always do. How many of you read? Praise God for the three of you. The rest of you come after. I was a school teacher. I can help you. Okay? I'm only charging a little bit of money. How many of you know in this season we need some... Extra change, right? I will give English lessons on teaching you, on teaching on uh, how to read. Amen? The rest, of the, the rest of you praise God for you. Yeah? So, so for those of us who read, I was, I was reading, Nigel, Nige, do you read? Sometimes. Okay. So I was, I was reading an article on, uh, from the WHO, World Health Organization. And they, they, sp they were speaking about one nation that really was incredibly successful as it pertains to the COVID-19 or the approach to the COVID-19. And it is, the, it, it is Thailand. All right. And in, in Thailand, what happened was they, they literally said that the results of Thailand was, it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal, almost unbelievable, their, their results. And then, you, and then they explained why the results of Thailand was, was so good. And it was simply because many, many years ago, there was the decision by a particular leader to put a lot of money in the health system. So the actual, firstly, the infrastructure was in place. Come on. And then SARS came in 2003. And so the infrastructure was tested with SARS, the first SARS. Come on, right? We, we are now facing SARS too, right? But the first SARS in 2003, they had the test there and they were successful then. This time now, with this uh, SARS-CoV-2, what they did was they had in place thousands of workers. Now remember, Thailand is huge. Come on. It's not like our little Trinidad or whatever. And so they had their workers in place beforehand to go into the villages. And, and so all they had to do was to dispatch them. Immediately. And because of the first SARS where they knew about wearing masks, as my husband always speak about, because he was there for the first SARS and, and he knew that they, it was mandatory to wear a mask, they started wearing the masks before even World Health Organization spoke anything about wearing masks. 
And so because of that from since then, they were successful. How many of you know it's good to be, to, it's good to have preparation? But it's one thing to have preparation, but preparation plus activation equals containment. Come on. They were able to contain the very thing that is that, that very COVID that is just plaguing everywhere around the world right now because they had preparation but with the preparation they knew when to activate come on you're not hearing me how many of you know there are many countries around the world first world countries that have some sort of preparation they have good hospitals and so forth but they, their activation was too late come on we could prepare for a thing but if we don't know when to activate a matter, there will never be containment when the enemy comes. How many of us here, we, we know a little bit of the word? Come on, we know a little bit. Am I correct? So let's say there's a degree of preparation. But if we don't understand when to activate, like right now there's so many people who are supposed to be who are not here because they figured they could watch it online. Huh? Let me tell you something. If you don't know when to activate your preparation, there will not be containment when the enemy comes against you. Because likewise, even as preparation plus activation equals containment, if there's the reverse, there is the reverse. So we look at Thailand as a particular example in the natural as it pertains to, as it pertains to this contamination that's happening globally. Come on, are you there with me? And, and so... Let me say this just because, you know, I, always when I'm speaking, I try to uh, explain some things globally. Amen? Because as a prophet, the assignment is what's going on globally. All right? And then I will come and I will speak to you as a church and I will speak to you as individuals. Are you okay with that? You know, sometimes people don't really like to know what's going on in the world. Just tell us, just speak about me, about me. I just want to know about me. I don't care what's going on in America. I don't care what's going on in, you know, Europe. I don't care what's going on in any other nations. And sometimes we are like that. Amen? Well, those of us who are in School of the Prophets level 3, how many of you know we need to know? How many of you, know, how many of you realize now we absolutely need to know what's going on around the world? All right. <clears throat> so we come now to this point. There was a vision that I had had uh, just before uh, President Trump got COVID-19. How many of you remember that I had this vision? We boy. We. You all don't remember? I had this vision and the vision was about three animals. It was about a bald eagle. You know, remember, okay, praise God. <clears throat> it was about a bald eagle, it was about a cobra, and it was about this, this wild boar. These three animals. Now, if my husband had this vision, he would have immediately understood the, the interpretation of it because he's an animal man. Right? He knows all about animals. Just to let you know, last week after church, There was a massive snake. I don't even know what you call it, but it's massive. What's it called? Uh, some boa constrictor that they had to carry to the zoo. They did not tell me that it was in the trunk of the car. I'm just saying it publicly. Right? But that's what he, he, that's what he does. He's into that kind of thing. So I had this vision, but not understanding it really. I did what I can from God the Lord interpreted. But guess what? The Lord said to me, and it, was, it reminded me by a young prophet in, in the church. He says, she said, this and this is now. This is now. You, you need, you, it, it's on my heart. And I said, oh my God, when I thought about it, I realized, wait a minute. We need to speak about this right and now. Now, here's the thing about this vision. In the vision, there was this amazing bald eagle. Now, the bald eagle is symbolic of a, a United States of America. Not so? At the time, I didn't even know that. Would you believe? I don't know. I'm a little, Right? And, and then the bald eagle was there swooping over his territory. Or her territory, I don't know. Their territory, their region. And then there was this cobra that came. And the, and the cobra and the bald eagle had this war battle going on. Remember that? And in the, in the battle, the cobra uh, struck the, the, uh, the bald eagle in its eyes. And the, and the bald eagle went blind. You remember that? And so the cobra wanted to take territory, the territory of, of the bald eagle. 
Now when the bald eagle went away and flew away or whatever, he's blinded, he flew away. And uh, then the cobras, they're so happy uh, around its territory, uh, the territory that it claimed that's not really it. Then suddenly a wild boar came. The wild boar, of course, the, the cobra was symbolic of Asia, which is China. Come on. And uh, then we had the wild boar. And the wild boar came and the wild boar came and crushed the, the, um, the, the snake, the cobra. The wild boar is symbolic of Russia. Are you there with me? And so that was the vision. And then the Lord began to speak to me. And, and I said, you know, I need to actually go online. I need, I need to try and do a little research on the, on, the, on the bald eagle, a little research on the cobra, a little research on the wild boar, because I need to know why the Lord actually gave such a vision. Because he said the vision, uh, part of the vision would have already started, but it literally is for a time to come. And we in the church, come on, we in the church need to be aware of what's happening. Are you there with me? And so I went and I researched uh, the bald eagle. And do you know, saints, that the Asian cobra actually spits its venom in the eyes of its opponent? I didn't know that. And so if you have, a, a, and do you know it's not the king cobra? Because I did not see the king cobra. I saw this different looking kind of cobra. Otherwise, I would have mentioned the word king cobra. And so this particular cobra would, would just strike at the eyes. And so that is what happened. And so in, in striking at the eyes, what would it do? It would blind. And so that is exactly what happened. And what, is, what was worse was that this bald eagle became blinded, symbolic of the United States, which will be blinded for a season. Are you hearing me? The United States will be blinded for a season. And it will go away. It will go away. And in that season of it going away, the, the wild boar will come. And Russia will come. And in the natural, because I was studying this, and in the natural, the wild boar and the mongoose are the worst enemies of the cobra. I did not know that. When I researched it, I found out those are the enemies of the cobra. Believe it or not. And what, the, and what the wild boar would do is that he will actually trample on top the cobra and crush the back of the cobra. Since that is for real, actually that is for real. I looked it up Wikipedia, that's what it says. And so when we study that, we realize, wait a minute. Uh, what, wait a minute, because the reason the wild boar wants to attack the cobra is to get its eggs. Because the cobra will want to multiply. Woo! Come on. What is China doing right now? They want to be in every country. Come on, they want to put a foothold in every country, not so? And so, and so this, this Russia is going to come and it's going to try to crush. And so there's this battle that's going to go on between Russia and China for autonomy. Saints, are you hearing what I'm saying? And all this time, the United States is nowhere to be found. They're in their little hole. And they're going to have some problems financially for, for a season. They're going to have problems for a season because wrong decisions are going to be made. Decisions are going to be made that are not going to be beneficial financially for the United States. That's why they're going to be blinded spiritually, economically. You're not hearing me spiritually and economically. They're going to be blindsided. Are you hearing me, saints? But here's what, here's what the Lord, uh, and so the Lord says they're going to come back. Remember they said, in the, in the vision, they came, the, the, the uh, bald eagle came back. When the bald eagle came back, he was still blind. And so we find scenes where the, the very nation that will, that will export the gospel. Come, you're not hearing me. The very nation that is the primary exporter of the true and pure gospel of Jesus Christ will be blinded. How many of you know we need to pray now? We need to pray. That was the vision. And so it spoke to me about colossal contamination. Colossal contaminants are going to come into the church or has already begun into the church and it's going to blindside many in the church of Jesus Christ and we will not realize what is going on and while that's going on the enemy is just having a field day come on taking over and taking control in nations 
altering, altering countries, changing the map. Remember I said that some, some time ago, probably a year ago, I said this map is going to change. On that side, I said the map is going to alter. Who's taking over this area? Who's taking over that territory? Because the idea is to control different territory. You better hear what I'm saying. Some of you would remember. So why are we talking about animals? No, this is not a uh, teaching on animals, but we're talking about animals because uh, when God speaks, he speaks in stories. This whole story that I gave you was literally a prophetic word of an, an historical event that is to come. That's what it is. And so that we can, if I tell you this our country is going to do this and that, you know, you will, you will not really remember, but you remember the bald eagle. Come on, you'll remember the cobra. You'll remember this wild boar. That's how God does it, right? And so what is the Lord doing with us right now? Because I'm, I'm speaking to you in an analogous way. I'm speaking to you in a way uh, that will bring some sort of understanding of what's happening in the year 2020 and why it's happening to us as the, as the world, why it's happening to us as a nation, and why it's happening to us as individuals. How many of us really, really want to know? And I'll say to us, even though I've been speaking about it over and over, every time the Lord has as we speak about it, it's something new. Come on. Every time we discuss why, what is going on, how many of the Lord gives us something new? And again, he's giving us something new. And so today, today, let me say to us, sometimes when we are not careful, even in our own territory, and when I speak about our own territory, I'm speaking about our own human anatomy, our body, our physical body. I'm speaking about our soul. Come on, our mind, our emotions, our will. And I'm speaking about the body of Christ. Even then, we can become contaminated. Come on. You're not hearing me? Physically, we can be contaminated. That's all, you know? We can take in things that will, that will contaminate us. Come on. We can be contaminated in our soul depending on what we listen to. Depending on what we choose to see. And the body of Christ can be absolutely, which is in so many ways right now, can be absolutely contaminated. And listen to me, these contaminants, these contaminants that we're going to speak about today can absolutely blind us from truth. As the, as the cobra blinded the, the bald eagle, something as massive and as fantastic as the bald eagle. Let me tell you something. The cobra only attacks an animal that is larger than itself for defense. You heard what I just said? The attack into the eyes will be for defense. What does that mean? When the enemy wants to attack your eyes, he knows he's, he knows he's already losing a battle. Oh, come on, man. You're not hearing what I'm saying. We're going around and, oh, God, the enemy on my back. He riding my back. I don't know. I can't take it anymore. And we're feeling we're being blindsided and this, etc. Let me tell you something. He's only trying to get to our eyes. He's only trying to get to our spiritual insight, our spiritual force, because he knows he's already lost the battle. He's already lost. Amen? Amen. So let me, I'm here to say to you, what is colossal contaminants? What, what are the colossal contaminants? Well, let me tell you what it is in the natural. It's extremely large amounts of poisonous substances. Extremely large amounts of poisonous substances whose ingredients are deadly to our soul. Extremely large poisonous substances whose ingredients are deadly to our soul. Just as the cobra is to this amazing animal, you would think the bald eagle could just fly away. Come on, you would think he could just fly away and be fine. But guess what? Didn't work for him. He was blindsided. We like to think we're good, not so? I don't need to come to church, I'm good. I don't need to come to church, I, I could stay home and pray. 
Come on, I could, I could read my Bible from home. I don't need to come to church. All is well with me. And we think we are good. This is the bald eagle will always think he could, he, could, he could deal with a cobra. What cobra could come and attack me? And then the cobra does. Listen, the, 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 the venom of the cobra can extend 6.6 feet. You know, that's specific, right? You know, that's prophetic. Because I told you I'm doing an analogous message today. What are we talking about? COVID, right? COVID. We don't hear me, man. We're talking about analogy here. Six feet. The furthest it has ever gone is 6.6 feet. Generally, it's six feet. Just like COVID-19. It can extend to six feet. If we're not wearing our mask. Oh, somebody will hear what I'm saying. So when we are talking about, listen to me very carefully, when we are talking about substances and we're talking about uh, the idea of, of these contaminants in the natural, when we, because the message is about food, because the message that Jesus gave as a, as a parable for the, for the disciples, not for, yeah, not for the disciples, for the Pharisees, the message he was warning them about, he brought it in a parable and it was in relation to food. And so when we look at, at food substances and, and contaminants of the food sub substances in the natural, it can be physical, it can be biological, or it can be chemical. Those are three areas, physical, biological, and chemical in the natural, right? So when we are looking at physical, if a physical thing enters your food, like here, how many of you had here have ever enter your food? Come on. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, it can be plastic. Come on. There are things sometimes that could enter your, enter your food, and, and when it enters your food, it can absolutely destroy you. Not so? Plastic, jewelry, bones, these kind of things, pieces of wood, all of these things, when it enters your food, it can absolutely destroy you in the physical. Well, in the spiritual sense, when we speak about physical things for us, we are talking about physical things in our home, our home, quarreling, what happens in our home, quarreling, come on, bickering, fighting, you know, hearing me, man, no, I, I'm speaking things, you know, things with our neighbors, things with our family members, physical things in our environment can absolutely, totally destroy us, it can become a contaminant, nobody's hearing me, it's okay, physical things, our health, physical things, our finances, it can destroy a marriage. It can destroy a home. Physical things. And then we come on. Uh, listen, uh, you, you, did you hear what I just said? And then we come with, there's this biological. And in the natural, the biological things that will affect food. Because we're talking about contaminants here. The biological things would be viruses. Come on. Bacteria. Insects going into the food that can affect, but guess what? Spiritually, spiritually, it's it's generational curses. Biologically, generational curses can literally destroy you because if your father and your father's father and that father's father used to used to engage in alcohol, and you come and you give your life to the Lord, but you're not delivered, it how many even know it can destroy you? It can destroy your marriage. It can destroy your family. Are you hearing me? If your mother and your mother's mother and that mother's mother used to be angry all the time and pelt things and throw things all over the place. I'm just saying. I never pelt nothing. Guess what? Guess what will happen? You come in, that generational curse, that, that biological thing, that biological contaminant can come inside and it can be a colossal thing and it can destroy you before you even start. Because if you're not delivered from it, you find yourself always shouting and you're, 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 you're cursing, you're angry, you're always angry. It doesn't matter what happens, you're angry. You're hearing me? And then we have the third one, which is chemical. And so in the natural, chemical things that can affect your, your food uh, would be, would be uh, uh, agricultural things, preservatives, toxins, metals, toxin met toxic metals in the natural those, those chemical things can affect your food. But guess what? In the spiritual realm, you know what it is? Toxic relationships. We can find ourselves in a toxic relationship.
a relationship that can destroy our life literally. I don't know about you, but I have had experiences where you just doing and you giving, but the, but the relationship is actually a toxic relationship meant to destroy you. Not to build you up, not to encourage you, but to destroy you. Those are called toxic relationship sins. And we have to address it. If anybody here is in a toxic relationship, you need to address it now. You need to deal with it now. You need to tell that person, hey, God bless you, but guess what? Come on, you're not hearing me. You're all quiet for that one, boy. Silence in the house for the toxic relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're okay with the generational curses and, and everything else, but you see the toxic relationships, you don't want to let go. You want to hold on. Well, this person is just making me comfy. And this person makes me feel nice. And all of this kind of thing. Like, I don't care, male or female, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm not talking, I'm not, I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, a, a male, female kind of thing. That, you know, because sometimes we can only think about that. I'm talking about that we could have friendships that we should not have. Because that, let me, give you a, let me give you a good example. Because sometimes we can have a friendship and that person is only uh, speaking against your spouse. And you start to think now against the spouse. And that's a friendship. But how many of you know it's a toxic friendship? Because it's going to pull you away from God. It's going to pull you away from what God wants you to do. Are you hearing me? Okay, wonderful. Now, but since... Some of us in this season, because I'm teaching a story now, huh? we are not learning a lesson. What's the lesson? There's a lesson to be learned and the lesson comes out of a story. But you know why we, we, we don't learn a lesson? Because it's just like the disciples. It's just like the people of the past. They don't learn the lesson. They don't get what God is saying. Jesus himself rebuked his disciples. He said, why it is you cannot understand when I teach a parable? I'm teaching you, I'm teaching this parable and I'm really addressing it to the Pharisees, not to you. You're supposed to already have known well, because you're with me. So you're supposed to already know but why it is I have to explain every single time there's a parable every single time a parable is is a story uh, presenting in a spiritual a spiritual truth and story form that's a parable right come on why is it every single time that I have to bring a parable you have to I have to explain to you what this parable means and no different right now in 2020 the whole of 2020 is a parable the whole of 2020 is an analogy. But for some reason, we are not getting it. For some reason, instead, we are looking in the natural. We are not seeing the spiritual manifestation of what is happening. Why is it that we have to wash hands? What's the purpose of this washing hands thing? How come, how come, how come the thing that God wants us to do globally is about washing hands? Come on, let's start. Mark chapter 7. Are you ready? Mark chapter 7, verse 1. Then the, then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together. So the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now when they saw some of his disciples, and what were the disciples doing? Eat bread with defiled. Eat bread with defiled means Koinos in the, the the word defiled there is koinos k o i n o s right, meaning it's common, meaning it's it's not sanctified, meaning it's it's bread that is supposed to be just for general use, and they're eating it with unwashed hands. That that whole concept of 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 defiled with unwashed hands, they found fault. They found fault with them for eating bread without washing their hands. Verse 3. For the Pharisees and all the Jews. Now let me tell you something and I explained this many times in Bible study some years ago. And, I, and let me explain it again. Because we're in the gospel of Mark here. It's very rare in the gospels, in the synoptics, Matthew, Mark and Luke, that you would find or you die away or the or you die used as the word Jews. 
always in the gospel of John, you will see the word oyodios. Oyodios is a sect or a, 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 a group of Jews, not all Jews. Are you hearing me? Okay, it's, it's just a, a, a sect of Jews in Judea. Are you hearing me? You need to understand this. Now when they speak here and they said for all the Pharisees and all the Jews, they are saying all the or you die away. All of those people and those, that group of Jews. See, I understand prophet. Right. Against Jesus because the or you die away were against Jesus. How many even know there's always a group against the prophetic? Okay. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, they're against the prophetic. Yeah. Against Jesus. Do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way. Holding the what? Tradition of the elders. That's what they were holding. To what? The tradition of the elders. And so you find up to there that the Pharisees were teaching religious traditions as opposed to God's word. They were speaking. They were speaking words and teaching things according to oral tradition and according to tradition of elders and not the word of God. You're not hearing me. Right now, we have religions doing the very same thing. Right now, we have a particular Christian denominations that are teaching only according to the traditions of man. And they have even done away with much of the Bible, done away with much of the word of God and they create their own book. And you have to follow this book. Not the word of God. Because this is what dong handed down from this year and that century and this century. And this is what you must do. And sometimes they alter it. Depending on, depending on what is trending. And so we find that exactly what is happening then is happening now. Since it's a colossal contaminant. That is happening in the church. And let me tell you, it's all over, not just one particular denomination. It's in every denomination that there are things that are being altered according to what is trending in the season. We know about that right now. And so it says in a special way. What's the special way? Well, right now, if you understand that there are particular cups that they would use with two handles. Come on. So they would, what the, what the, what the, what the Hoya Diaway would use? And even all the Jews, they would use these cups with two handles. I wish he could, Jesse could pull it up so we could see a picture of it. But they would use a cup with two handles. And, and they, would, they would make sure that they, their two hands, because they would see that their hands are impure or their hands are defiled. And they believe their hands are defiled because their hands may have touched one of the Gentiles. And as far as they were concerned, the Gentiles were impure. And so you can't touch nobody else. Are you hearing an analogy there? Come on. You can't touch anybody else, uh, the, 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 the Gentiles, because if you touch a Gentile, you now become impure. And so you have to continuously wash your hands. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And uh, so they found that if they had to pick up a cup, come on. If they had to pick up a cup, they would wash one hand, hold the handle of that one cup, uh, the, the, and, and, and to make sure that, that the hand does not touch the other hand, they would wash the other hand and hold the other, hold the other handle of the cup. So ridiculously strict were they when it came to their version of defilement. Come on, saints, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. They felt that they should ceremoniously cleanse themselves. And it was a ceremonious cleansing. And they're cleansing themselves from, from, from the, you know, the, the Gentiles and what, uh, the Gentiles being uh, unholy, the Gentiles being impure. And so we are cleansing ourselves. How many of you know right now with us, we can't touch anybody? Come on, if we touch anybody, we have to wash our hands. How many of you seen an analogy here? We're seeing external factors. Come on, are you there with me? And so we are seeing something where external factors are affecting what is going on in us. That will cause contaminants with it. External factors affecting internal contaminants, right? Or, or causing bringing in, uh, contaminants inside of us. Are you there with me? All right. Now Jesus addresses it. Let's go on. Verse 4. Chapter 7, verse 4. And he says, when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they have received and hold, like the washing of cups, pitchers, copper vessels, and couches, which is what we just spoke about, right? And then verse 5 says, then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, here's what they said, why do your disciples, 
not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but they eat bread with unwashed hands. In other words, we're talking about man's tradition. Man's tradition. Saints, they are, they, are, they are taking man's tradition as superseding God's word. Man's tradition, saints, will be, and right now is contaminating us. Man's tradition is contaminating us. We don't even realize that we're being blindsided by man's tradition. But that's what's going on. Verse 6. He answered and said to them, well... Did Isaiah prophesy to you whom? Hypocrites. Who is Jesus addressing? Hypocrites. Who is Jesus addressing? Hypocrites. Who is Jesus addressing in this season? Hypocrites. How would you know you're a hypocrite? This is what he says. This people honor me with their lips. And let me tell you something. If you remember what I said about honor, it means you fix a value on something. Because the only way you honor somebody means that you have a value towards that person. You know somebody doesn't honor you when they don't have any value or, or, or they don't place any value or worth to, to you. Oh, you didn't hear me. But their heart is far from me. And in vain, which means, and for no purpose. In vain means for no purpose. They worship me. In other words, the worship it's for no purpose. Because to worship, that word worship means to stand in awe. That word worship, actually the literal translation of that word worship means to be in awe of God. In other words, they're standing, but it's for no purpose. They're standing as the members of the congregation, but it's for no purpose. Oh, you're not hearing me. Teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. In other words, they're teaching doctrines, you know. But they're teaching it as, as commandments of men and not of God. I said this, I say that, this is what you have to do, that is what you have to do. Not in the word, but this is what, this is what we have. Come on. Verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men. The washing of pitchers and cups and many other things that you do. He says, all of these things that you're doing, he says, he says, you put aside my commandments, my things, my truths that I gave you to, for, 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 for foolishness. Is really what Christ was saying. The Pharisees were doing this. It was all saints, a colossal contaminant. And so I'm here to say to you, it's all irony. Everything that we are doing, everything in this year, the entire year, is a year of irony, saints. Do we understand what I'm saying? The year is a year of irony. We are in a pandemic. And the pandemic requires washing of hands. Am I correct? It requires constant cleaning. Constant cleansing. The Pharisees felt as though they needed to constantly, physically wash their hands for a ceremonial cleansing. They weren't speaking about uh, uh, health wise it wasn't talking about health they were speaking about it being a ceremonial cleansing because if they touched them they would be impure you understand what they were talking about and just like with us it's like we if we touch this thing and, I, and this is where I want to go if we touch this person if we touch that person or outside we will be we can be infected and how many of you know that could be true but what is God teaching you see, because he is teaching in a reversal of a matters, and this is where I want to get to, because there is a current event story. We are literally in a parable. God has us literally in a story. We are in a live story that God is trying to teach the church, that he's trying to teach everybody as it pertains to cleansing, as it pertains to what is defiled, what is, un, what is uh, not defiled, as it pertains to what is clean and what is not clean. He is literally teaching us because in the, in the second and third quarter of this year, the Lord said that there would be implosions. He said there will be external factors that will affect internal economies and affect internal hearts. He said that, not so? Well, I'm here to say to us right now, we are coming into the place in the fourth quarter where it's not about that. He is dealing with ex external factors. He's dealing with, he's dealing with explosions, not implosions. Because the teaching of what we're teaching today is not about implosions. It's not about external factors that will affect you and me. 
It's about internal factors that is affecting around us. Only one person will get that. It's explosions. It's what's going on inside that is going to affect what's happening outside. But Lord, this is going on with me. But Lord, that is going on with me. But Lord, I can't see my way here. But Lord, I can't. And, and the Lord would say, it's what's happening inside of you. It's what's happening outside. Oh, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. And let me tell you something for those of you who like to think, well, I can't eat this and I can't eat that and I can't eat pig and I can't eat pork and I can't eat whatever. I can't eat bacon. And, and you know, the Bible speaks about not eating bacon and the, the Bible speaks about not eating ham and all of this. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. In this particular passage, the Lord says everything is clean. Bless it and go with it. Verse 18 says, so uh, uh, Mark 17, 18 says that the whole, it says, so he said to them, are you thus without understanding also? Why it is you can't understand what it is I'm actually teaching? I'm not speaking about whether you can wash your hands or not wash your hands. I'm not speaking about clean, uh, uh, you know, COVID-19. Don't think for a minute that this season that we're in is about COVID-19. It's not about that because if you're thinking it's just about that and I have to wash my hands and I have to distance myself and, and if we're just going down that way as believers in Jesus Christ, it means that we have already missed it because I'm bringing a story that you are already in. You are part of a story that I am presenting so that you will not forget this. You will not forget it because, because Mark 18 says, he says, are you thus without understanding? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him? So those things that are happening all around you, that can't, that can't defile you. That cannot contaminate you. So all the, all, the, all the implosions, all the external things that are happening right now, he says, that's not going to destroy you, you know. And so some of us in the church of Jesus Christ, yes, we, we, we of course in the natural, we, we make sure we protect ourselves, whatever. But can I tell you something? That's not going to kill us. It's what's happening inside of us that will really kill us. Oh, you're not hearing me, man. That is what is going to really destroy us. Not, not, that, not that which is outside. That's not going to defile us. That's not going to be the contamination that's going to come. The colossal contamination is what's happening inside. So I want to break it down in three points quickly. The first point is this. What is Jesus doing? He is teaching in story form. As he did with the Torah, as he did, as Jesus did with parables. He is teaching in story form. As he did with the Torah, with all the, uh, the, the, the patriarchs, as he did with Moses, he's teaching in story form. And in the new covenant, Jesus, as Jesus taught in parables, he's teaching a particular lesson in story form right now to the church if the church will only get it mark chapter 7 says verse 14 when he had called all the multitude to himself he said to them hear me everyone and understand there is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him but the things which come out of him those are the things that defile a man if anyone has ears to hear let him hear since we had been dealing with implosions all the time, we have been dealing with those external factors and we figured that is what it's all about. This factor and that factor and this is what's going on outside and that was, and God says, no, that you're missing the point right now because in this fourth quarter, I'm getting you back online. I'm getting you back to the, because, extra, because implosions deal with babes. It's babes that deal with implosions. It's babes that deal with external factors affecting what's going on inside of us. It's babes and God says, now it's time to grow up. Now it's time to be adult. Now it's time. Now I could, now I could expose your heart to you. And now I, could, now I could take you and deal with what's going on inside. So what's going on inside? If you should, if you should allow me to deal with it, then that's going to change your environment. What's going on inside will change your environment. It's no longer the implosions that I'm, I know it's three people that understand what I'm saying, but thank God for the three of you. Thank God for the three of you. Since it's what, what enters, uh, what is, what is, it's not what's outside, it's what's inside. Because there's nothing that will enter a man that will make him unholy, that will make him unclean. It's what's inside a man. 
But this person did this and that person, and I ate this and I and I and, I, and this. It's not what is outside. It's what's inside. You see, I allowed you as children to deal with the externals in two and three quarter. Come on. I allowed you to deal with that because, you know, growing up, it's a pandemic. I'm allowing you to deal with that. But you see, come fourth quarter, no more of that because it's a new year. How many of you know the fourth quarter is a new Hebraic year? How many of you know the fourth quarter is a new Hebraic year? And he says, it's from this year. I'm not, we're no longer going down that path. I'm not spoon feeding you anymore. Now we are coming to the place where you've got to deal with what's happening on the inside of you. I don't know who's hearing me. The second point quickly. Second point quickly. Purity laws focus on internal impurity, holiness, and sanctification. That's what it's dealing with. Because he didn't get rid of the purity laws, you know. Purity laws. They didn't understand the purity laws. They were taking it in the natural. That's not what he's dealing with. Purity laws focus on internal impurity, holiness, and sanctification. That's what it's dealing with. He's not teaching about food contamination. He's not talking about the menu and what you could eat and what you, not, what you can't eat. He's not talking about how the virus is spreading and, and things to do uh, to prevent the virus from spreading. That's not what Jesus is dealing with in this season. He's dealing with impure hearts. Since he's dealing with impure hearts, that's what he's dealing with. And this is a whole story. God is allowing a whole year of a story for us to understand that he's dealing with impure hearts. He's not dealing with washing hands. The washing of the hands is supposed to remind us of that's what he's talking about. It's supposed to get us to a place. My God, Lord, even as I'm washing my hands, I know what you're really dealing with is inside. Come on. Mark 10, 7, verse 10. Verse, verse 10, go up to verse 10 quickly. We've got to go faster. For Moses said, here's this point. He's what is he dealing with? He's dealing with impurity, holiness, and sanctification. Here's what he says. He says, honor your father and your mother. And he, come on, Moses said what? Honor your father and your mother. And he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. All right? Come on, here's what he says. But I say to you, but you say, but you say, sorry. If a man says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is Koban. What is Koban? Koban is a special gift that you give to God. It's money that you put aside. And you see that money that you put aside, that money is for the Lord only. Are you there with me? How many of you know that's good? Wait, wait, wait. How many of you know that's not a bad thing? The Koban is not, go it's not bad. It's a good thing. But here's, here's, here's the thing. Verse 12. Then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down and the many such things you do. Here's, here's the Pharisees. Here are the Pharisees. They found a loophole. Because remember, we're talking about purity laws, right? And they want to throw in Jesus' face, all kind of thing. How it is you find your disciples not washing hands and, uh, you know, following the tradition of, of, of their elders, right? And Jesus is, they want to throw in my face. Let me put this back to them. How it is you, huh? you like to feel you're holier than thou. Huh? But you now taking the money. Right? And you want to take your lump sum of money and you're putting it in Korban so that you don't have to help your father and mother. That's what they were doing. How many of you know saints? Because it is the rule, it's a law for the Jews, but it's a, it should be for us too. Even though it's not written in stone, it's supposed to be written in our hearts. That when we have an elderly mother, an elderly father, that we are supposed to take care of them even as they took care of us. And even if they did not take care of us when we were longer because of whatever reason was going on in their life, how many of you know we should take care of them? But they with their trickery, they want to throw thing on Jesus' face. With their trickery, they decide, you know what, they'll take the most of their money and they will put it in Korban. And they will say, oh, this is a gift for God. And guess what? We have no more money for our parents. Jesus exposed their hearts. You see, saints, you see, saints, this season is a season of exposing hearts, you know. Why do you think you have so many empty seats? It's a season of exposing hearts. And that's why nobody wants to hear it. They want to come here. They want where you could switch off when they want to switch off. You see, in the house, you can't walk out. It looks bad. 
the last point so what therefore in the end is colossal contamination what therefore is colossal contaminant what is it let's go to the end 17 to 23 let me read let's go down to the end verse 17 when he had entered a house away from the crowd his disciple asked him concerning the parable so of course what is the usual thing he's talking to the pharisees and scribes they're supposed to know not so Many people in the church right now are supposed to know this whole story with pandemic. They're supposed to know why Donald Trump didn't, didn't get, uh, get re-elected. They're supposed to know. Many people don't understand. And it's not about who like and who don't like. It's nothing to do with that. It has nothing. And this is where we have failed to understand. And, and, and so the verse, the verse says, uh, verse 18. So he said to them, are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him because it does not enter his heart but his stomach in the natural and is eliminated thus purifying all foods. In other words, all foods are purified. How many of you know it's eliminated since? Come on my ducks. It's eliminated, not so? And he said, what comes out of a man? That defiles a man. That contaminates. And what defile means? Contaminates. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed what? And here's where we go. Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, and evil lie, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. You see, Jesus declared that the food, it's not about food. He says it's not about food. Pharisees, it's not, about, it's not about physically washing your hands, which we think. Well, as long as I wash my hands, everything is good. As long as I social distance, as long as I wear my mask, God is good. I don't need to study anything else. And God is saying, no, you've missed the point. You're looking in the natural once again. You're looking at external factors. You're counting to see how many people have COVID. And he says, you have missed the point, church. He says, that's not, it's not the numbers of people who have COVID. It's not looking to see all who in this country have COVID. And, and come on, how many of you know, how many of you know that's what's going on in, in you know, all the, all the headline news? This number and that number and the other number. And we who are in Christ could get caught up in it. That's not what it is. He says, I'm bringing you into a place of no more implosion, but explosions. Deal with him. Oh, come on, you're not hearing me. He says, the colossal contaminants is this. Evil thoughts. First one, what is evil thoughts? Let me tell you something. It's when one true, one's true nature cannot be revealed. Your personality can be revealed. But your true nature is hidden it, 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 and it can be evil thoughts you could appear let me tell you how crazy it is you could appear to be kind outwardly but in your home you're unkind you're not hearing me that's evil thoughts that's an evil thought there's adulteries and it's happening right now in the church there are people sending messages. There are people doing all sorts of things. That's adultery. There's this fornication that's happening. It's still in the church. It's happening in the church. Listen, the Lord, is, he says, you're not dealing with, this is what I want to deal with in this year, 2020. You want to talk about, you want to talk about COVID and washing hands. That's what you want to talk about. Pharisees, you want to talk about washing hands. That's not what I'm, that's not what I'm dealing with. Why do you think I'm not letting the disciples wash hands? Because you're talking about, you're seeing it as something that's a ceremonial, a ceremonial thing. As a defilement. That's not what it is. That's why he deliberately didn't have them wash hands. Come on. How many of you should really wash your hands before you eat anyway? But he deliberately didn't have them wash hands because he, they will do whatever Jesus did, not so? And so he deliberately had them not wash hands just so that, just so that they wouldn't see it as something that's a ceremonial thing. But we are doing this thing in the natural, but we are feeling as though this is what it is when God says, no, I'm not dealing with that. I'm dealing with murders in the heart. What's the next point, murders? I'm dealing with people who have things in their heart that they want to just target people and destroy their life with their tongue. I'm dealing with theft. There is so much spiritual plagiarism that is going on right now. It is phenomenal. 
There, is, there are people who are going online. You, because let me tell you something. Right now, everybody, everybody's a superstar. Everybody's a superstar. According to how many, how many people you have online. That's all. And so people are watching people online and, they, and there's spiritual plagiarism going on. Okay, let me write this down. That's a good point. That's a good point. And you come online and as so though you're this big revela revelator, you, you just get this bust this revelation on people when it is literally you're copying somebody else. I know what I'm talking about, you know. Covetousness. We're watching other people in the midst of what's going on and we're looking to see what this person have and what that person have. Wickedness. Listen, tell you. Let me tell you something. God is dealing with wickedness in the heart of man right now. He's dealing with it. He's dealing with deceit. There's such untrustworthiness right now. There's this Judah spirit that is still there. God says, I'm dealing with this in this season. Lewdness in broad daylight. Well, thank God we don't have any, uh, what you call it, uh, carnival next year. Because that's what lewdness is, huh? Lewdness is, is public exposure of one's body. You know what is an evil eye, saints? You know what is an evil eye? It's jealousy. That's an evil eye. It's utter jealousy of somebody else. And blasphemy is speaking evil of the Lord. It's you literally speak evil of the things of God. That which is good, you are speaking evil of that, which is good. That which to bring deliverance and transform your life, you speak evil of those things. Pride, pride is arrogance, a, a disdain attitude, and then foolishness. You know, you, know, the, you know, many times I have to deal with that because I could talk foolishness, you know. There's foolish behavior, foolish behavior. And I want to close today because there are 13 inner vices. It's 13 saints. God is dealing in the colossal contaminants in our lives right now. Oh, I don't have this. Oh, I don't have that. Oh, I don't have the other. I'm good with God. And God says, no, you probably have all. The very one that says I don't have any might be the very one that has all. There are 13 inner vices that are colossal contaminants that we have to work at right now, saints. Because if we don't work at it, when 2021 comes around and you think, you think 2020 is bad, you think 2020 is bad, I told you it's a decade, huh? I said it's a decade. There are things that we're going to find very tough, and I'm speaking Trinidad and Tobago. Be very careful. If you don't get yourself in alignment right now, right now, right now, I'm not talking about some other time. If we don't get ourselves in alignment right now, we are going to fall prey to the enemy. We're going to fall prey. We're going to be as prey to the, to the cobras and the, and, the, and the wild boars. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so we have to get ourselves in position right now, says the Spirit of the living God. Because there's a, our life is an irony right now. Because our life is one where God is saying, you want to wash hands, you want to cleanse yourself on the outside. And I said, I want to cleanse you on the inside. There are 13 inner device, uh, uh, vices that we have to deal with. Could we stand and just bow our hearts? Just bow our hearts right now. Lord, we are part of a live story. You, you, actually, you actually presented a story for us. And we're in it right now. You're actually allowing us to experience physically the act of washing of hands. And, and in it, you're showing us it's not about that. As you were trying to explain to those Pharisees and scribes, it's not about the washing of hands. It's not about touching someone. It's about what's inside. That inner def defilement. 
It's about having holiness from inside. It's about walking right inside. And I hear the Lord say, this is what I'm doing in this season. I'm watching the hearts of man. I'm watching to see if, the, if, if, if you will turn your heart around. Because there's a time and season for everything under the sun. And this season that you are part of a story. You're part of this parable. Jesus spoke a parable and yet explained it to the disciples. Uh, and many of us right now, we're in a parable and we don't understand the parable. And we're only looking at external. We're only looking at a wrong. We're, we're, we're looking still at the implosions. God only allowed the implosions for a season. He says, now it's time for, uh, to be explosive because you are to called to be influencers. You are called to be an influencer to those in your field. Those in your garden. And right now in the name of Jesus. Father. Lord teach us today what is, what is it in our hearts. Lord we don't know. Sometimes we, we, we doubt ourselves. We don't even know. We think of ourselves more highly than we ought most of the time. So Lord, deal with this inside of us by your spirit so that we can really come out victorious. So that by the end of the year, God, whenever, when you look to open the door and you open a portal, that I understand you're opening, even as, even as, the, even as the, 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 uh, the vaccine comes. As we said by, by December, even when the vaccine comes, there's something in the natural, globally that is, there is something that you're going to do with us, Lord, with the church. There's an there's a open portal that will come, God, and I know it, I know it, I know it. Lord, that we would be able to be in alignment. And, we, and it's only those, oh God, who understand how to deal with these inner vices. It is only those who understand, Lord, that we have to deal with these colossal contaminants in us. And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give him praise.